All right, now the same question, but as a definite integral. Uh, say we move with a certain velocity, how far do we go from time equals 1 to time equals 3? Um, let's approximate the answer, and uh, we'll approximate in the same way we've done in our recent activity. So let's say, let's fix a delta t of 0.1 seconds, okay? Uh, and let's say that from time equals 0 to time equals 0 0.1, we go a distance approximately, right, distance equals rate times time. So the velocity at, say, time 0 times the uh, time interval. So from 0 to 0 0.1, we go about this far. That is a distance equals rate times time that we've used there. From in the next interval, from point 0.1 to point 0.2, we go about the velocity at point 0.1 times delta t. And then from point 0.2 to point 0.3, the distance we travel is we'll use the velocity at point 0.2. These are all approximations at the distances traveled over short times. They're approximations because the velocity is not actually constant over that time interval, but we're using a constant over that time interval. But the time interval is small enough that we probably have a good approximation here, right? The velocity changes from time point 0.1 to point 0.2, but if we just use the velocity at point 0.1, multiply by time point 0.1, then we get a good approximation for how far we've gone over that time interval. So we continue, and then our total distance is approximately, right, v at time 0 times delta t times v at time point 0.1 times delta t plus dot 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 plus v at 2.9 times delta t. And that would represent our approximate distance traveled over the time interval 2.9 to 3. And so it's a sum. Right, we know we have a sum. Uh, it's a sum of v of t sub k's times delta t's. k goes from 0 to n minus 1. That sum is called a Riemann sum, right? That's a Riemann sum. And uh, we know if we want the exact distance, we can use shorter time intervals. Right, we use 0.01 seconds instead of 0.1 seconds in shorter and shorter time intervals. Um, and we can get the exact distance traveled if we take a limit. And uh, that exact distance um, from what we've seen, right, the limit of the Riemann sum is an integral. So the exact distance, as we take the limit of the Riemann sum, the exact is the definite integral. So we get the exact distance through this definite integral. It's this process of approximating it using chunks and then taking a limit as the time interval gets smaller and smaller. It gives us the exact value as a definite integral.